you think that you can do that? Really? You think that you can be on a on a podcast? You think that, that people want to listen to what you have to say? I don't need you to approve of me. That is the difference. The person who has narcissistic traits would not want anyone to be more special than them. How we can protect ourselves because some relationships cannot be avoided. Welcome back to the fifth and final part of this mini series here on The She Word, Living with a Narcissist, It's Not About You. Now, running through this series, we started off looking at whether narcissists were born or were made. We then looked at whether a narcissist can change. We then looked at what are the traits, what are the indicators and the flags of a narcissist so we can identify whether someone's just a little bit mean or really are displaying narcissistic behavior. And then we also looked at how to deal with a narcissist. And today in this final part, we're looking at how to protect yourself from a narcissist. And I'm joined once again by Roberta Feruja de Bono, who is a psychologist who's been on this show now more times than anyone else. <laughs> Roberta, thank you so much for being back with us. Now, the last time we met, we talked about whether or not a narcissist can change. Yes. And not taking that on board yourself. Exactly. And making sure that we have the right mindset as we deal with someone with a narcissistic personality. And I want to, do, to look at today how we can protect ourselves because some relationships cannot be avoided unless, of course, you're happy to completely delete different people from your lives, whether it be a parent or whether it be a work colleague or mm -hmm. a friend or a spouse or, a, you know, it could be any, a, a sibling. And that's not always possible. No. But the damage that a narcissist can cause, and we talked about this on whether or not they can change, the damage can be very far reaching and it can be devastating. And it's usually caused in a relationship by a perfect storm of mm -hmm. one personality being drawn to a narcissist. But if you're in a relationship with a family member, let's say, or a colleague, we mm. have to look at how can we protect ourselves when we aren't in that relationship, but we might still be damaged by their behavior. So I want to start off by asking you, what is, what is the single best way to protect myself from the damage that a narcissist can cause? Because is the only, I mean, is the only answer to walk away? Because that to me, no, as I said, not. it's not, not always possible. Not always possible. And I guess sometimes it can also be very damaging because you do not repair the damage that has been done by just leaving, you know? I think that um, uh, the way to protect yourself is to start to recognize the resonances that can happen, the triggers that can happen when you are in such a relationship. So most often, as we have said in the previous episode, what the narcissist or a person who has narcissistic behavior would do, would kind of um, instill in other person a lot of doubts about the self, mm. you know? And that could be a trigger for you. So if you've, you know, lived in a life where you have been very criticized, then having someone criticize you would immediately trigger you. And it will trigger you either to defend yourself or to take it on board and really believe it. Or else, you know, it could slowly, slowly start to break your self-esteem. Now, the more important thing is to recognize what is happening inside of you. And when someone is trying to do this to you, you remind yourself that, for example, you're not a little child anymore. You're an adult. You have accomplishments. You have done good stuff. And in your head, you replay this over and over again. You know, I'm good and I don't deserve this. You know, this is, this is not about me. This is about the other person. So um, the famous tennis metaphor that now has become <laughs> um, uh, quite uh, quite uh, um, famous <laughs> in this um, uh, in the situation, you know, it's like playing tennis. You know, when when someone throws something which is not yours, then you and you recognize it is not yours, then you don't own it, and you can do this also by checking with others. So. In a way, look, you know, having a conversation with someone and you can tell that person, listen, am I, you know, really, uh, I don't know, 
without any emotional self-regulation or emotional control. And the other person would say, who? You? You know, and when, you know, these people start to validate who you really are, then you can really say that when that person is going to tell you, oh, you're so emotional or something like that, you can just say to yourself, you know, this is not about me. This is about him or her. So I think this is very, very important because unfortunately, usually, because we are made to feel bad, we do not reach out because we will be afraid that other persons are going to actually confirm what the other person is saying. Because usually the person who is narcissistic would have a lot of power over us, mm -hmm. you know? So we're talking about breaking down that power. Now, I would, yes. I'm going to ask you, I didn't ask you beforehand, but I'm going to ask you now if we can do a little role play. I'm going to be the narcissist okay. and I'm going to say something to you and I'm going to ask you just to, for anybody that's watching, that's mm -hmm. thinking, how do I apply this to my life? Okay. To go through the process of breaking down what I've just said. So okay. if let's, that's okay, let's go. can we do this? <laughs> um, let me just say, okay, Roberta, I'm, I'm going to apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. You're rolling up your sleeves. I'm going to apologize in advance because okay. it's not anything I would say. All right. I'm going to say to you, so I'm sorry, you, th you think that you can do that? I, really? You think that you can be on a, on a podcast? You think that, that people want to listen to what you have to say? What you have to say? Really? I mean, I, I, seriously? Okay. I'm going to stop it here because I'm immediately recognizing what's happening inside of me. And when you're saying that, it is creating something inside of me. And it's a fear, you know? And in my head, I already have that thought oh my God, perhaps she's right, you know? So immediately, as soon as you did that to me, I immediately had a reaction. So sorry. It's okay. <laughs> I'm just, no, but it's true, you know? I did have that reaction inside of me. So immediately, if you start recognizing these things, for example, you already know, oh my God, you know, I'm feeling bad from inside. But then I know, I've been on this podcast for a number of times, people have given me good feedback, you know? So I can also say to myself, but hang on, you know, I've done this, I've done good, you know, so oh, perhaps it's not true. But recognizing this that happens inside, you know, is super crucial because that's the badness that's being projected onto me, you know. And, it, and if you're kind of sensitive because you have been criticized when you were young or you haven't gotten the approval, then you believe this badness as in, oh my God, she's right, I'm not good. Okay, you know? so you started so to recognize that. I recognized what is happening inside of me, and now I need to shift it in my thinking. So I need to say to myself, no, you know what? I've done this and I've done, and I've done good. Now, it depends on whether I want to challenge you or not. I must just say in my head, you know what? I don't care what she is saying. I know I do well. Because I might try to challenge you. You know what? I've done the she word and it was when really you say good. That to me? If I do that to you, you might. I'm going to come back to you and say, yeah, I know, but really? Yeah. Because there were a lot of people on the she word and that Trudy, she doesn't really know what she's doing. So she'll have exactly. anyone on the she word. So it doesn't make you special. Okay. So you see, again, I feel bad. Oh, I hate this. <laughs> it's, it's, I'm really sorry. It's okay. So again, I feel bad. But if I keep on saying to myself, you know, you have your opinion about this. It's okay. I think I'm doing well. And that's all right. I don't need you to approve of me. That is the difference. I don't need you to approve of me. In my head, I'm saying I don't need this person's approval. I know I'm doing well. Sometimes what a narcissist would also say would be something like, you know, I love you and I know what's good for you. I'm doing this because I love you. I'm telling this. I'm telling you this because I love you. You know, other people don't love you. That's why they say you're good. You so know? I might say to you, I'm telling you that you're doing this podcast, be that you shouldn't do it because, you know, I don't want you to look daft. I don't want you to make a fool of yourself. Oh. I, you know, people respect you and what you do. Really do you want to do that? Mm -hmm. And we hear that as well. We hear yes. that rhetoric as well. And that is that is exactly that. It's yes. a rhetoric. It's a lie. But what you were doing, this is putting this tennis. Yes. So every time I throw something at you, you're just throwing it back at so me it's not and about dismissing me. it. Yes. You're pro I would say something like, you know, probably 
he's just or she's just jealous that she doesn't have this opportunity or something like that, you know? Because this is not, it doesn't, it doesn't sit well with me. It's not my experience of myself. But I am aware of my experience of myself. If I'm not, then it can break me. Then it could make me call Trudy and tell her, you know what, Trudy, I'm sick. I won't come, you know? Yeah. And yeah. then I wouldn't know that I'd be good because then I would be giving in. Yeah. And, the, and also curtailing to that, that command or that that questioning then escalates into the next time the next yes. time the next time so going back to something you said in the second episode you talked about the fact that not only should if somebody is a narcissist and they eventually do recognize their behavior the people that are involved with them also should be looking at therapeutic behavior because what we also talked yes. about in that show was this perfect storm of somebody who needed uh, or, or was involved in that personality type and it was attracted to them mm -hmm. they also have their own issues yes. to be attracted yes. and to be able to do that tennis you you've have, got to have a strong mind right yes you do have to be trained <laughs> in a way yeah and you have to be trained not just in your thinking, but also in working with your resonances. This is the resonance. This is what I said at the beginning. You know, that feeling that you get. And that would make you think, okay, is this about me or about the other person? You know? And it's not easy. I, I'm a psychologist, you know? And I, I'm trained, but, I, I, and I'm, but I'm human. So, you know, when you, when you went full on on me, you know, I immediately felt it just I'm the same. I'm so sorry. No, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's a role play, you know. Um, but yeah, I, I felt it too. So but the more important thing is that I know what to do with yeah. it. What if you could start your journey over? Start here and start again there. That's how life works in a circular way. We understand the importance of circles. And that's why you are at the heart of ours. Find your way to wellness with Browns. Yeah. So we talked also in, in uh, you mentioned a phrase that I think is really important to recap. You mentioned in the second show, this phrase trauma bond. Yes. And the trauma bond, whenever I hear about narcissist and narcissistic behavior, we hear about this trauma bond and how it's mm. important to break the trauma bond. Can you just identify for us what? We've talked about it, I think, a little bit already, but what is that trauma bond and how do we break it to protect ourselves? So the trauma bond comes around when, you know, um, you get someone who is uh, um, has experienced in their childhood most often a lot of criticism or, you know, the, the idea of not being seen or not being recognized and validated. And they kind of meet up with a person who is very special and who initially, who believes he's very special or she's very special, <laughs> and who initially might make that other person, you know, just to hook them in, feel that they're very, very special as well. And therefore, you kind of um, get hooked to the idea that you are special after all, because this person is making you special, feel special. But what happens then is that that specialness disintegrates and it becomes a denigration. You know, because the person who has narcissistic traits would not want anyone to be more special than them. So slowly, slowly, they start chipping away at their specialness by denigrating them. And therefore, you kind of are, you're not given that reinforcement anymore. And you'd want to get that reinforcement, that specialness. And you start to understand that, you know, or start to feel that you need to regain it and you do a lot of things to regain it. And perhaps sometimes you might get it a little bit. You know, there is this kind of reinforcement that sometimes comes and sometimes doesn't come. So it keeps you more hugged, you know, and it's called intermittent reinforcement. And that intermittent reinforcement, like the, the little bit of specialness that is given, keeps you there, keeps you stuck, you know, because you know it's going to come and you really need it because you really need to feel special. You know, and the person who is hooking you in would know that this is what keeps you there. So sometimes there is this kind of, um, I, I bring you in and then I throw you back. I bring you in and then I throw you back, you know. And that is where the trauma bond is created, you know, because the person who has narcissistic traits would need to feel very special. So in a way, you not being okay would make him feel like, you know, he's saving you or he's taking care of you or he's very special, you know, and... And that imbalance is created. Now, to protect that person, that person needs to understand that after all, even though in their childhood they might have had those experiences where they did not 
feel seen, they did not feel validated, they were perhaps traumatized, you know, it's not the case that they are not special. It's not the case that don't don't deserve love. You know, they need to understand that they deserve all the goodness in the world. They're good people, you know, and that they can actually be okay without having anyone to give them that specialness because they're special themselves. I think this is the more important thing. And unfortunately, usually, you know, on your own, it would be very, very difficult to actually make understand this. Most often we don't think about our childhood experiences and this is why therapy then really helps because you have to go there, you know, to undo a little bit of what, of the harm that has been done to be able then to build up a sense of who you are. That, and, and once you have that sense of who you are, that you're okay and that there's nothing wrong with you, then whenever people try to tell you that you are wrong, then you can play tennis. But unless you do that, you know, unless you actually believe that you are good, then it it won't happen. So the starting point for anybody who is in involved in a narcissistic relationship, whatever it is, is to look out for themselves. Yes. And where, if there is a healing process that needs to happen, they to pursue that, do that to main to, to find healing yes. before you're able to manage this tennis. And yes. any other tricks. Now, I am just going to ask you uh, about distance as well, because we talked about this way back when in yes, season, season two, because I remember uh, Sue at the time says you can just cut that person off mm. who is a narcissist in your life. And in actual fact, as we've mentioned at the beginning of this episode, you that quite often can't do that. But you can establish damage. Boundaries. Because even, even if you're playing tennis... Even you if tired. you are the most astute and really well-rounded and powerful individual, it's still going to be exhausting. Yes. So how do we establish distance mm -hmm. and boundaries? I think it depends on the, on the nature of the relationship. So if it's a colleague that you're seeing every day, then I would say if, it, if your life is being made impossible to live, there are a million jobs elsewhere. You know, so then, yes, I think cutting off, like finding another job would be the best thing to do. But if it's a sibling, if it's a parent, uh, it becomes more difficult to tie, to cut ties. And I am always a bit, you know, cautious about tying ties. So I think establishing um, the amount of contact you have with that person and only um, and feeling more in control when there is contact. So you prepare yourself for contact. You know what's going to come. And you kind of mentally prepare yourself. Again, I don't know whether it's a good idea to challenge or not. Sometimes you you, you can't challenge. So you just mentally prepare yourself. And also you know that, you know, once you leave that, that context, you're going to go in a context where people love you, where people care for you, where people believe in you, where, you know, and, and you get that. So you need to get, um, um, you know that um, there are people around you that you can call you know, that you can talk to and they can remind you that you're good, that you're okay, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and you can have a chat with them. So having very close people who with whom you can talk to is really, really important. And having that support system is very important. And I think learning how to do boundaries is part of it because um, uh, sometimes, you know, um, the narcissist would kind of become very um, uh, upset with the boundaries. You know, you don't love me anymore, or you, you know, they, they, they become a bit, uh, and, and they would kind of try to draw you in again. But if you remember why you need to be doing this, and sometimes you need to have a list. So uh, one thing I sometimes tell my clients to do is a list of the reasons why you need to keep those boundaries. Mm -hmm. And you keep it in your wallet or you keep it on your mobile, and sometimes you need to read it, you know. Even when you're leaving a relationship, it really works, you know, having a list of reasons why you know this relationship is not working anymore or why you need to be leaving this relationship. You keep them there and you remind yourself, you know, when it gets a bit tough, when, you know, I don't, for example, no, Christmas is, you know, when Christmas is around, it gets more difficult because people need yeah. to be together, yeah, yeah, families yeah. need to be good together. But you can always uh, curtail the time you spend and make sure that before and after you have your good people around you, you know, and what good people advice. exist, what you know. What great advice. So I think that is what I would suggest. Roberta, thank you so, so much. 
Uh, we have taken a bit of a deep dive over the last five episodes or four episodes of, of this living with a narcissist. It's mm -hmm. not about you. And I think we just need to keep reiterating it's not about you. Definitely not. That's why we're calling it this. That's why we have the title of this show. Uh, of course, for anybody you've mentioned therapy, you've mentioned getting support. And for anybody who has been watching us on this series, we will provide the details of where you can seek support and you can look out for yourself and get help and support and if necessary therapy to work through these issues. It's been a very powerful five-part series. Thank you so much for closing this off. You're welcome. It's been a pleasure. I mean, people suffer and uh, if we can, you know, help them, help is out there. So let's try to help people who are suffering. Absolutely. And you just said people are suffering. And I think one of the most important things for anybody who's been listening or, or watching this series is that they are seen, that yes. they are recognized. And that validated. Exactly. Validated. Yes. Thank you so much, Roberta. Thank you You're so welcome. much also to Claire and to Rose and also to Mariella for taking part in this show. Please do get in touch. If you need any more information, we will be giving the numbers out there and contact details for you. But do feel free to get in touch with us because here at The She Word, we are all about empowering women.